Our presentation and accompanying briefing paper today are based on a study of a shared education partnership that formed in the city of Derry, Londonderry, involving primary and post-primary schools who collectively devised a shared education programme that addressed a, a variety of pressing social issues that are relevant to children and young people in the city. Data collection took place between April 2011 and June 2014, and we intend to make this report available in the near future, and the following provides a summary of our findings. So, in 2011, uh, the Interface and Contested Spaces programme was launched, and it was funded jointly by the Office of the First and Deputy First Minister and Atlantic Philanthropies. And it was designed to improve relations between and across disadvantaged uh, contested space communities. The programme supported nine projects across Northern Ireland, and this was over two phases uh, that ran between 2011 and 2015. The programme encouraged groups um, such as schools and youth service providers and community and voluntary organisations to establish projects that could address need, encourage reconciliation and contribute to better outcomes for children and young people and families. Four areas were supported by a fund of £4 million. Um, early years and parenting programmes, uh, shared space targeted and delivered through schools, interface youth engagement programmes, um, aimed at young adults and shared neighbourhood programmes targeted at families. To, to be eligible for funding, projects needed to involve groups and organisations representing both sides of the two main traditions. Each project had to be supported by a lead organisation, which could evidence a background in one or more of the four outcome areas presented here. And crucially, projects had to be located in contested space settings, which were within the 20% of the most deprived wards in Northern Ireland, as measured by the Noble Indices. So the Sharing Education Programme, based at the School of Education, acted as the lead organisation and supported the formation of a new partnership in the city of Derry, Londonderry. The Foiled Contested Space Education Partnership, which is a mouthful, um, formed in the spring of 2011 and comprised of eight schools. Five of those schools were primary and three of them were post-primary. Four of the schools were controlled and four were maintained. Many of the schools in the partnership in the past had been involved in cross-sectoral initiatives such as the Sharing Education Programme or were members of their, their own local area learning communities. From September 2011 to June 2014, a total of 1,161 pupils, ranging from year five through to year 10, were involved in weekly shared classes uh, within the partnership. There were eight principals, three vice principals, 35 teachers, 29 of those were primary teachers and six were post-primary, and an external primary coordinator involved in the management, coordination, and teaching within the partnership. So in order to be eligible for funds from the Contested Space Programme, the schools were required to consider their local and social contexts within which they were situated as the basis of partnership working. In negotiating the remit of partnership, schools agreed that collectively they should address community relations and identity themes in shared classrooms given the contested space context of the city. And as part of the process of establishing this remit, educators were also in agreement that there were common issues affecting children and young people that transcended ethnicity and cultural differences. Educators wanted to explore a range of health issues with pupils and in particular express concerns about the types of pressures that children and young people faced in regards to alcohol, drugs, solvents and cigarettes. Concerns about pupils being involved in substance misuse and antisocial behaviour across the city prompted the schools to invite a representative from the PSNI to join the partnership steering group. And in doing so, the PSNI representative was able to corroborate staff anxieties, revealing that street drinking amongst teenagers was problematic in the city and often issues of antisocial behaviour resulted from this. Furthermore, the post-primary schools emphasised the importance of addressing themes such as sexual health and resilience and promoting healthy relationships whereas the primary schools agreed that they could focus on promoting healthy issues more generally. The schools also agreed that the pervasiveness of the internet and social media and smartphone technology meant that pupils faced new and often evolving pressures to remain safe and also act appropriately whilst online. As a result of the partnership agreed to explore five social themes using the shared education approach. These five themes provided a superordinate focus for the partnership. These five social themes were subsequently located within curricular, the curricular areas of personal development and mutual understanding for primary schools and learning for life and work for post-primary schools. 
And additionally, the primary schools also explored many of the social themes, spe specifically community relations issues, identity and even gender through a shared literacy program. So while there was a single partnership involving eight schools, unified by a partnership infrastructure, collaboration between teachers and leaders, and an overarching curricular program, for practical purposes, the partnership decided to create four sub-partnerships within the larger network structure, and as a consequence, our research employed a multiple case study design. In each of the case studies, the authors carried out ethnographic observations in schools and other venues across the contested space setting. Semi-structured interviews and focus groups were also conducted in each of the schools. Participants included school leaders, teachers, partnership coordinators, pupils, and parents. And in the primary schools, formal focus groups or interviews with pupils didn't take place, and instead we used informal or unstructured or uh, interviewing, um, which captured conversations between ourselves and pupils um, while we carried out observations during shared lessons. So for the study, we undertook a review of literature uh, to understand more about what constitutes as collaborative effectiveness in educational contexts. We were particularly influenced by the work of Stephen Katz and others, which are referenced in the briefing paper. And this literature proposes a series of characteristics common in many effective educational partnerships. And as such, an effective learning network is characterized by a collective identity and an agreement as to the purpose and the focus of the partnership, interconnections and relationships at various levels, which can be both professional and personal, collaboration that's deep, intensive, and of good quality, and preferably which permeates across schools, um, where there are opportunities for educators to reflect and inquire together. Support from leaders um, is important, but accountability and leadership must be distributed across the network, and opportunities for capacity building and professional development. So the characteristics of effectiveness presented here provided us with a thematic lens with which we used to collect and analyze data from the schools. So the next few slides provide a summary of the research findings, um, and they out basically outline the social and the educational impact of the partnership. So in terms of social impact, the study explored the context of contested space with participants. Pupils, teachers, leaders, and parents all talked about living and working separately. This separation was ex exacerbated by the geography of the city, and namely the Foyle River, which obviously separated the two main traditions and of course the political, cultural and religious differences that were described. The notion of contested space was keenly felt and lived, um, largely through institutional differentiation, and separate schooling is, is a perfect example of this. Participants described prior to sharing and collaboration prejudices that, that they have held about the other community and, and anxieties about travelling across the foil. Participants, however, highlight that, uh, um, however, highlight how the partnership has changed the nature of contested space by reframing separate schools as, cross, as a cross-sectoral network in which pupils from different community backgrounds can learn together and forge new relationships, and where educators, through collaboration, are less professionally isolated because of opportunities to develop new professional and personal connections. Participants described a blurring of boundaries. Moving between schools meant that pupils and educators regularly travelled through the contested space into each other's communities, and thus challenging the idea of bounded contentment um, that was proposed by Alan Roche. And as a consequence, participants talked about how anxieties and prejudices reduced, and how the felt experience of visiting schools in the other community and learning together normalised over time. So I'd ask you to consider the perspective offered by, by this teacher. Hopefully you can read that. So it talks about this idea of the concern that abuse would be hurled, that stones would be hurled at buses. It talks about different sides. <clears throat> Shall I move on? So the study identified that shared education provided opportunities for participants to form meaningful relationships. Pupils described various types of relationships with each other, and importantly, their definitions of friendship are actually quite flexible. In focus groups and during classroom observations, pupils were keen to demonstrate how many of the pupils from the other school that they knew by name, but these relationships appeared to be more akin to acquaintances than friends, 
Other students described closer relationships with pupils from the other school, which tended to emerge from groups of pupils that learned together over much more sustained periods of time. Many pupils described sustaining relationships via social media, and some described friendships that developed in shared classrooms but were maintained outside of the school. Educators similarly uh, described particularly positive relationships with one another, frequently describing both personal and professional relationships that emerged as a consequence of working together. Observations revealed how teachers from different schools sat together, how they conversed and joked together, and shared break times and lunch times together. And significantly, beyond the remit of the programme and outside of the school context, teachers talked about phoning, texting and emailing each other, particularly in the evenings and weekends. And in some cases, staff described socialising outside of school, including having drinks and, and meals together. And the study also describes how the partnership engaged parents, largely through hosting parental events, such as information seminars and showcase uh, events, which highlighted their children's shared learning experiences together, but also emphasised the curricular focus and the social need themes that were adopted by the partnership. These events took place in venues across the city, including each of the schools, in theatres and hotels, and this again encouraged uh, uh, parents to move across, uh, effectively across the, uh, the river or across the contested space. Connections between schools and community services improved as a consequence of collaboration in the course of addressing social themes as the basis of the shared education project, schools sought the expertise of community-based agencies to help build the capacities of teachers and to assist with the delivery of shared lessons. Schools connected to a wide variety of agencies, including health professionals, city council officials, other educational bodies, and various statutory and voluntary agencies. One connection of note was the relationship that developed between schools and the PSNI, and in particular, the relationship that developed between the police and maintained schools. This is significant given the historical and political blockages and the general levels of mistrust that existed in Catholic communities, especially during the period of the Troubles. And by default, the police found it difficult to access maintained schools. This, the study describes how the relationship between maintained schools and the PSNI improved, initially due to, uh, um, initially due to discussions and agreement between the Catholic Church, uh, CCMS, and the PSNI around 2011. However, this study, des this study describes the key role played by the PSNI in terms of sitting on the Partnership Steering Committee, working with teachers, advising around the social need themes previously discussed, and presenting to pupils in shared classrooms. So moving on to the educational impact. The study also revealed how that the educational impact of the partnership. The pupils highlighted how shared education was both engaging and enjoyable. Pupils described looking forward to traveling to and learning in each other's schools with some suggesting that shared lessons were the most enjoyable element of the school week. Some pupils described enjoying shared learning because often pedagogical approaches were informal and much more relaxed than lessons in their own school. Pupils highlighted in particular the active methodologies used and the opportunities to engage in group work, discussions, debates and games as ways of exploring social themes. Pupils also highlighted the, highlighted the impact of having external agencies deliver lessons in classrooms and in particular, uh, the impact of shared classes that were hosted by the PSNI and CEOP um, as the most memorable engaging elements of shared learning. The study describes the importance of the partnership infrastructure that was created, comprising of school leaders, teachers and external members. This infrastructure helped crystallise a collective identity between the eight schools and established the remit for collaboration. But while the partnership drew leadership and direction from this steering group, there was evidence that leadership was distributed amongst staff. In particular, teachers at the primary and post-primary levels assumed much of the day-to-day -day coordination of the partnership, including planning, creating resources, teaching, organising travel. And this freed up uh, senior leaders to oversee the partnership at a much more strategic level. In doing so, some teaching staff described feeling entrusted and respected to make important decisions about logistics and the curricular development within the partnership. Teachers talked about the challenges of addressing controversial or contentious issues in the classroom. Given the social needs focus of the project, many of the themes addressed in shared classrooms were challenging topics. Interestingly for some, the most challenging themes were not around topics such as substance issues or sexual health. Rather, it was how to talk about religious or political themes in shared learning environments. Staff highlighted the importance of engaging with external agencies to build their capacities, particularly around these challenging topics. Furthermore, the study revealed how collaboration between leaders and teachers helped create a mutually supportive culture between schools where educators helped each other to professionally develop, where they could avail of resources and expertise and garner support from one another. 
leaders and teachers described how collaboration between schools mitigated the impact of professional and sectoral isolation. Staff described how new mechanisms were, were established to both review partnership progress and support teacher capacity, including end of academic year reviews, the orientation of new teachers, joint, plas joint planning lesson events, regular coordinators meetings, staff training events, support from external agencies, and the formation of informal networks between teachers. Lastly, the study describes a significant example of how school collaboration can lead to school improvement. During the period of data collection, the controlled post-primary school and the partnership had been placed into formal intervention by the Education and Training Inspector. Its science department was deemed inadequate after inspection. In response, one of the maintained partner schools, a specialist science school, offered to assist the control school in terms of improving its science provision. The specialist science school made its head of department, science teachers and resources available to the control school. Staff from all three schools, uh, particularly the, well, the two schools, met regularly to share practice. Each of the school leaders at interview argued that this level of collaboration could only have happened because of the existing relationship and trust that had developed between the teachers and school leaders over time. When the inspector returned, the science department was assessed and given the status of outstanding. The school leaders at interview attributed this improvement as a direct consequence of collaboration between the schools. A normalised culture of collaboration has developed between the three schools. Importantly, collaboration has broadened beyond the remit of the contested space programme and it's evident in other curricular areas and departments, particularly with the control school offering expertise to the maintained schools around approaches to special needs and all three schools exploring how to develop middle managers. So, in conclusion, there are various examples of joined up approaches in cities where schools play an important role in responding to social needs and challenges. For example, the promised neighbourhood initiatives in cities such as New York and Los Angeles, or children's zooms as described by Alan Dyson. The schools in this study have devised a model of shared education that, that addresses social needs across the city. This type of model is innovative and relatively uncommon in Northern Ireland in that it involves an entire network of schools which are cross-phase and cross-sectoral working together in the same city setting. As such, the schools could be collectively thought of as a type of social partnership which connects the local voluntary and statutory groups and government with the aim of addressing social issues and building social capital. We're currently using this model of partnership and others, such as the Shared Education Partnerships in Ballycastle and Limavady and elsewhere, as examples of effective collaboration, especially when we work or, or when we disseminate internationally. Currently, we're working with teacher organisations which are supporting Jewish and Arab schools in Israel, particularly in the city of Ramla, and we're also working with the university in Los Angeles, promoting shared education and collaboration between charters and traditional schools. The data presented in our study provides strong evidence based on the literature that the partnership was able to demonstrate the types of characteristics associated with effective collaboration. In particular, a strong sense of cohesion and a collective of identity had formed between the schools. There was a coherency between the schools in regards to the purpose of the partnership. Leaders from all eight schools were supportive and involved. Professional and personal relationships formed between teachers and school leaders and the schools invested in developing the capacities of their teachers. Resources were shared among schools and new knowledge and innovative practice was developed as a consequence of collaboration. People described also being engaged and enjoying shared learning. In terms of sustainability, it's important to highlight that the various case study partnerships described earlier still exist, despite funding from the Contested Space Programme having ceased in June 2014. The primary schools continue to work together and each of the sub-partnerships are now in the first phase of the Sharing Education Signature Project. Similarly, the three post-primary schools are also part of the first phase of SESP, but they've also applied to become a shared education campus with other schools in the city, proposing to develop a digital IT hub for all the schools. The model of partnership described here is based on the premise of pupils learning together and educators working together over sustained periods of time. In the case of the Contested Space Partnership and other shared education partnerships that we, work, that we have worked with since 2007, sustained cross-sector collaboration between schools demonstrates a model of education that challenges the current system, which is based on almost a century's worth of educating Catholic and Protestant pupils separately. In encouraging maintained and controlled schools to work together, there are opportunities to make these sectoral boundaries more porous and flexible and build resilient interconnections between communities.